Hi, I'm Merrick Tomato. And I'm Classic Gamer. And welcome back to Let's Play Broken Sword 2.5, The Return of the Templars, the fan game, which you can download in the description below. Yes, indeedy. I don't need any souvenirs. Maybe later. <laughs> Looks like a broken broom. Only the stick is left. Why not? Might be useful at some point. Have you noticed the holes in the souvenir I don't need stands? Souvenirs. Paper, Maybe man's later. paper. Yes, I've noticed some clip things have been clipped out. Yeah, I think that, I think the boy over there. He's looking at the boy. I remember that from when I played it. Unbelievable. The seller has cut two holes into his newspaper so he can watch the stand while reading. Oh, that's quite clever. Hello. Yes? You wouldn't give me that box of chocolates for free if I asked nicely, would you? Who do you think you are? Leave me alone if you're not buying anything. Fair enough. Are you by any chance interested in the well over there and the workings? Not really. What's so interesting about a well? Now come on, it might hide the greatest treasure of the Knights Templar. Knights... what? Templar. Templar. Knights Templar. Didn't you pay attention in history class? Didn't you pay attention in history class? I never went to school. Alright, this game's voice acting is falling apart. <laughs> Yeah, that because kind of... Thing. They played the same line twice. Um, the voice actor for George was clearly supposed to spell out Templar, but just said it slow. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then he, and then his line didn't really come up. How long have you had this shop? Since that crazy professor over there started believing he can find some treasure down the well. But that's possible, isn't it? He won't find anything. Two weeks ago, I told him I had lost my wristwatch and asked him to keep an eye open. Did you get it back? Yes and no. I found it near the well, but now it's gone again. My god, you're not real good at taking care of your things, are you? Wow, you are rude That's not to easy people you don't have know. to watch the shop all the time because some brat wants to mess about with your goods. I even cut holes in my newspapers so I can see what's going on while those thieves think I'm reading. Have you caught anyone yet? Certainly. That brat over there tried to steal a box of chocolates. I caught him and spanked his ass like in the good old times. Maybe I can find your watch. If you want to look for it, fine. I've stopped looking for it a few days ago. I'll only lose it again. So, just out... I'm just wondering. Um, this is in Portugal, right? I believe so, yes. How come they're all talking perfect English? Wouldn't they at least be, like, Spanish? Um, it's in Portugal, Portuguese, but... Well, Portuguese is a type of Spanish, isn't it? It's... it's different. I know, I know yeah, I know, I know it's different. Like, um, in Brazil, it's, it's a different type of Spanish. Yeah, in um, Brazil, they speak Portuguese. Oh, yeah. And Peru, they speak Spanish. Yes. Because that it was conquered, it was conquered by the Spanish. No, it's it's just very unusual. So, can I pay for those chocolates by credit card? Do you have a Mastercard? No, American Express. <laughs> Can't you read the sign? It says only Mastercard in capital letters. And now you are driving away my customers with your loitering. Mister, you could be a bit more polite. That's rich coming from you, Mister Stobart. Now, hold on, hang on a minute. So he's saying that in the middle of nowhere, he's got a wireless card reader. Yes. That can that would have to have an internet connection. Yes. That can read credit cards. Yes. But he's in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Well, I don't know. Maybe I, this game's set in the future or modern day. Who knows? <laughs> Now modern day, then future. I don't need any souvenirs. Maybe later. A childhood without chocolate. That's unimaginable. What the fuck is that? We're in... 
Don't even think that I haven't seen you. Put that back. Can I hit him with the broom handle and take it? Nope. Oh, all right. How come suddenly we know that that, that, that guy's name? Should it just say the boy? The boy reminds me of young Maguire. I wonder what became of him. Um, I, mean, I think they uh, out. <laughs> g g I don't think it's get it's his name. I know Gemi is French for uh, it's a French slang word for child, like kid in uh, in English. Why not just say child or kid? You? What me? Yes, you. Do you have a minute? What are you doing in a place like this? I live here, sir, in the street, in the nature. There's no street. You're not here. serious. I earn a living from polishing shoes, begging, and stealing. What? Why is there nothing to talk to him about? I don't know, but we gotta talk to the archaeologist first. Possibly. A man of about 60 is examining the well. Interesting. Hi, my name is George. Ah! Oh, pardon me. You made me jump a little. Bom dia, my name is Professor Aruda. What are you doing with the well? This isn't a well. It's an antique cistern. Cistern? What's that? Holy mother. It's an underground container for rainwater. Uh, and what is it that you're doing with this cistern? I'm examining it. I can see that, but why? I'm an archaeologist, and I'm about to make a really important discovery. What discovery is that? <coughs> Are you interested uh. in history? About a year ago, I would have asked myself the same question until this thing with the Templars happened. Oh, you do seem interested in history. That was seven you years ago, George. Time, I can tell you the whole story. Um, sure. So, uh, I was just thinking I was going to say. A cistern under, under, so an aqueduct is like above the ground, isn't it? It's what the Romans would Well, an aqueduct build. is so water can move from one place to another. A cistern is stationary, but it collects rainwater. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so I'm getting, I'm getting the two confused. I actually saw a documentary about one of the few indoor aqueducts that would like and how how they would cleverly make it slope slightly so the rain would flow downwards yes even if they were like uphill they would make it so it would flow it's possible right. that um the aqueduct would lead to the cistern as well yes well and i i think that's really really Portugal impressive was a paradise for the templars besides france he was the first European country in which the order established itself after its foundation in Jerusalem in 1119. In 1128, Queen Teresa presented Castle Sure to the order as a gift. It lay near the Crescent Front. Crescent Front? You mean the front line with the Arabs? Ah, the Moors, correct. In 1147, Teresa's son and heir Alfonso, a Templar, conquered the Arab stronghold Lisbuna with the help of his fellow knights. Today, Lisbuna is called Lisbon. Alfonso declared Portugal's independence and became his first king. In return for the Templars' help, he gave them a stretch of land in the heart of the country, where the Templars built this castle. At the time, the Order's Grand Master was a man named Gualdim Pais, sometimes known as Galdinus. Domar became the Templar's military headquarters, so to speak. Alright, what else can you tell me? What happened then? In 1291, the last Christian bastions in the Holy Land fell, and the Europeans blamed the Templars. Trouble was at hand for the Order. And then a French spy called Eskew heard about the Templars' satanic practices from a disgraced ex-Templar, and reported this news to the French king. Philip the Fourth. Ah, you know of him? A little, but go on. Well, at the time, the accusations revolved around a mysterious graven image called Bahomet. Huh. Are you sure you don't want to tell the rest yourself? You can skip the bit about the Bahomet part. I'm kind of familiar with that. 
Ah, are you also aware that the original idol is believed to be here in Tomar? That's a new one on me. I got the information from the transcripts made by the Inquisition. The idol itself was never found, but there is still an image of Baphomet within the castle. It is engraved on one of the bricks in the kitchen wall. If it were to be removed, it is said the ceiling and with it the whole building would collapse. Hmm, my I'm mission here might be a little impressed. harder than I first expected. Back to the Templars. Well, on Friday the 13th of October, 1307, Philip IV had all known Templars in France arrested. Even in Spain, where the Templars had eliminated the Arab threat, people turned against the order because they no longer needed the knight's protection. In 1308, the Spanish Templars escaped across the Tejo to Portugal and occupied the stronghold Al Muror. All their treasures they took with them, and it is assumed that they were later brought here to Tomar. But what made the Templars think they were safe in Portugal? The Portuguese king, Dinis, hadn't forgotten what the Templars had done for his country and was still grateful. He granted them sanctuary. In fact, it was Dinis who re-established the order under another name with the elder Joao Lorenzo. They lived here as the Order of Christ and even kept their trademark, the Red Cross. But what about the cistern? A cistern? Ah yes, the cistern. I will come to that. This cistern is far too refined to have served as a mere water butt. I believe the Templars hid something extremely important here. Wait, did he say extremely important? Maybe he's talking about the seal I'm looking for. Tell Possible. me more. Do you have any idea what it could be that they hid here? Who knows? Maybe the Templar seal that was lost when the Order was destroyed. Maybe the Fifth Gospel, which Christ is said to have written himself and was believed to have been in the Templar's possession, as with the Holy Grail. The seal! The return of the Templars! Right. The time of reincarnation. The hour of revenge. The dawn of a new empire. And a single seal is supposed to do that? How could the Templars have done that, Professor? The question should be, how can they do that? Can do... Yes, George. Can do. After the Templars' extermination, the seal vanished. Philip the Fair had hundreds of soldiers search for it. It was the iconic symbol of the Order. He knew what power the seal possessed, and according to the legend, still does. What power? You power of voodoo. Listening, George. Who do you do? The power of return. <laughs> Are you telling me this seal has magical powers? Don't be stupid, George. The seal itself does not. But I assume it can trigger some kind of mechanism which could prove Einstein's theory of space war. Oh no, come on. So it is true that the Templars in real history may have had items like the Holy Grail and the Ark of the uh, Ark of the uh, Covenant. Covenant. Of what? That's the one. Thank you. Um, but uh, that was lost when they fell in their destruction in. Uh, uh, when they were destroyed by Philip the Fourth, and actually, some of the history you hear in the games, mainly that bit just there, isn't exactly true because Philip the Fourth actually was in debt to the Templars. So he thought, well, what? Well, how else can I eliminate my debt? Oh, that's oh, right. I'll, kill I'll the people the I owe money to. <laughs> exactly. I'll kill the money that I owe money to. That will wipe the debts of what I owe them and all the debts they they owe that the other people owe them. And I'll and how do I do that by turning people against them? And how do I turn people against them in the in the Middle Ages? Say they worship by... Alphabet. Well, no, that's not actually. Tr they didn't actually uh, worship him. I what know. they did do is what they what Andre said in the first game was spit on the cross, um, sexual worship, uh, worships, you know, all that kind of stuff, um, all that kind of like bad stuff that would get you seen as evil in those times um and yeah so that a lot of them were hung obviously as we know in france that was the main source of their destruction um and and i think um philip also kind of 
uh, what's the word, conspired with the Pope to also do up trumped up charges. A bit like, uh, well, not the same, but uh, you could say that he was doing that with the Pope, whereas a few hundred years later, when Henry VIII didn't like what the Pope was doing, when he wouldn't allow him to divorce his first wife, he distanced himself and created his own church, and he, he made himself head of the church. And when you're a king, you can do anything you want. Yes. <laughs> well, back when, the, back when the monarchy had actual power. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the places that are under the British rule now are not really want to have independence. But um, yeah, uh, that's why a lot of people don't like the royal family. Right. That's a different tale for a different time. But that seems a little silly. That seems a little silly. Like, yeah, they're rich, and that makes them the enemy of of the people regardless but it's not like the royal family has any actual power over anything no but when i think when britain's problems prince are the fucking prime minister's fault not theirs when when prince william and his wife went to, i think it was africa or somewhere like that um for a tour or for a tour of the country they were pretty much booed and told to go away in other words um, because that's one. I think I think it was an African country. I can't remember if it's African or, or somewhere else. I could be wrong. If so, anyone knows, I'd be I'll be really pleased to know that in the comments because I don't know. Um, but they obviously it's not up to them, you know, about you know giving you know if they want their independence, you know, I would say just ask for it. I don't understand. What's Einstein got to do with this? By means of space warp, it is possible to travel into the past. And why hasn't anyone made a trip to the past yet? How do you know no one has? Are you telling me... Uh, no, no, I only wanted to show that you can never be sure, George. Remember that. Do you believe that people have traveled to the past? Uh, not yet, as there are no machines that can maintain the gravitation field. The power of the field collapses within milliseconds. So there's no need to worry, right? I didn't say that. The fact is, nowadays, there are machines that can open the gate for a short time. Only they need something to keep it open, to stabilize it. And that's where the seal comes in. How can such a tiny seal stabilize a gravitation field of this size? It's the belief of people, George. Millions of people have died for their belief in this emblem. It has developed a force stronger than the gravitational field, and thus the seal can maintain the gate. That's the mystic part of the story. So the Templars need the seal to stabilize a gravitational field and to travel into the past. But where's the sense in that? Why time of return? Listen, the gravitational field enables time travel. But only for a fixed span of time. 700 years. The penny hasn't dropped there. Think about it, George. What 700th anniversary do we have in three days? The Battle of Paris! Exactly. The Battle of Paris. 10th October, 1303. Thousands of Templars died before the city gates in an attempt to kill the French king and seize power of France. As France was the military force in Europe at the time, it is hard to imagine what today's Europe would look like if the Templars had won the battle. What now? We must stop them. The new Templars will try to get hold of this seal and use it to travel back 700 years, one day before the Battle of Paris. That will be the 9th of October. They will take modern weapons and reinforce the Templars' troops with their own. The battle would be won easily. Everything we know today as a modern democratic society would disappear even from our memories. At least, that's what I assume. No one really knows what consequences an alteration of the past would have for us. Alright, so I've concluded this man is insane. He's very intelligent for like an archaeologist who only like archaeologists are very clever. 
No, I'm saying that archaeologists only deal with like digging up things and researching like, them and dating them, and there's a whole no, lot and that as well. But, but gravitational gra- gravitational pull and time travel. I, I, I the, the plot's kind of lost to me since it became a time travel thing. That's what I mean. Like you know, for so for. And for a guy who is yeah, not what I not what I not what I mean. So not what you mean. Um, I mean, I the plot is has become has fallen into incomp- incoherency now. Yeah, I, I think, I think yeah. time travel was not the right direction to go for this plot. Yeah, I mean, I think like if I had gone, if I if this was the plot, I wouldn't have gone back to the Battle of Paris. I would have gone back to when the Templars were like portrayed by the the king. You can only go like, back seven hundred years. I, I don't know. It's uh, should we leave the, this kind of thing to the doctor to sort out or something? <laughs> <laughs> Fun, <laughs> funny enough, the doctor has never actually had a, a Templars episode, has he? Well he could. It'd be, it would work. Be it would work. It'd be very interesting. Just like how they did the Pompeii one. Where they had, where you know, it, it, it turned out that the the story behind that episode was that he started the eruption because of something inside the volcano, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous to say the least. But it's a great story plot. Why is it Return of the Templars then? Now you can't interpret that literally. What they mean is the symbolic return. The Templars' culture would return to the present by this alteration. Unless we stop them. What if the seal isn't down there? Then may God help us. So what are we waiting for? Let's climb in, oh, so get that thing up here, and save the world. Fucking well. I don't think so. The Portuguese Ministry of Cultural Affairs has forbidden any excavations on this site. What? But why? Why are you here Who then? Who knows? But the fact is, I can't go down there. And neither can you. Well, it's ex- they forbid excavation. It's not excavation if you don't dig a hole, is it? No, no. It's no. just exploration. If they f- expressly forbid excavation, then, I mean, you can't dig anything, but you can definitely go down there with a flashlight and a rope. What if you happen to doze off for a while, and a total stranger to you, say an American tourist, fell into the hole in a totally unintended and still careful way, and once down there, he found... Forget it. I appreciate scientific spirit, but I will abide by the law. But we're talking about our future, Professor. And you want to go by the law? We're there won't about your be past, any George. laws to obey if we don't act now. What? <laughs> George. Oh, this is ridiculous. Uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> First we meet Dr. Lecter in the park, and now there's fucking time tri- like, oh, I, I don't know. I mean, that's exactly what I mean, like, you know, how how does how does he know all this? It, well, it's if related, he's an if he's studying this site. studying this site, then that might be, I don't know. I... Yeah, but, but as you said, an archaeologist dates and, you know, digs holes and finds things, which is great. I, I watch Time Team. I love what they do. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it for sometimes three days like they do, but I still love what they do. However, he's talking about time travel and, you know, obviously history. They know about history as well and dating things, but time travel and the and the field and all that kind of, how, how does he know Archeo- all that? As we learned from the last Indiana Jones film, archaeology and time travel do not mix. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I think, you know, an archaeologist should, you know, stick with, like, if you're also, finding if, stuff... If, if we've established that time travel is possible, shouldn't the archaeologist, you know, the person who studies fucking history, be ecstatic about this possibility? <laughs> I, th- I, think, I, think they, I think they should. Look I think the they t- should, but <sighs> as the last Indiana Jones established, as you just said, that, you know, he's like when they find things they are dating it based mm. on what they find and when it is why would they want to go back in time and, and abuse that and change anything in time well no no not ch- i don't mean change anything but just like 
ob- observe like what better way to study the past than return to the past and observe it, right? Well, what 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 if you could return to any time period? What where would you go? Uh, nineteen seventy two. How come? Uh, so I could buy the uh, the first edit like the Marvel Spotlight number five, the first appearance of Ghost Rider when it was like twenty five fucking cents, and then I could have that really hard to find comic and the same for Ghost Rider issue number one that would come a few years later, just so I can get these comics I can find, not to sell them later, just to have them. Uh, I wouldn't put be uh, in, interfering with the time stream at all, just. Do you know what? Do you know what I would do? Maybe wait I around to nineteen seventy seven. Go see Star Wars in the theaters. That seems like it would be an f- interesting experience. Very. Um, do you know what I? Do you know what I would do? I actually asked one of my friends this. So, you have a chance to travel back in time to nineteen twelve, April fourteenth, when the Titanic was struck by the iceberg. You arrive on deck a minute after the Titanic has struck the iceberg. What do you do differently that they did that they didn't do that night? Absolutely nothing. Do you know what? Absolutely you know what? nothing. You wouldn't do anything differently. Absolutely. This is the thing: going back in time and buying a comic book probably is going to have very minimal effects on the time stream. Like maybe, maybe I don't know. Um, someone who's blonde now has red hair. Whatever, but. <laughs> If you stop, if you alter or even prevent a major historical event, I'm not saying I'm not saying prevent it. It's after the Titanic has struck the iceberg. So the ice iceberg has done its damage. The ship is going to sink. You can't change that fact, right? I saw this on a documentary. James Cameron asked this question, and they were like, um, he said, put everyone on the iceberg, which is a ridiculous thing that to suggest. Ridiculous. However, it was a thing. Um, Get the get the boats to go out because there was another boat on the sea that night called the Californian that turned off its wireless that was in range of the Titanic that could have come earlier than the Carpathia and could have saved more people. I would have got I would have told a rowing boat that the first boat off the ship to row to that lights on the horizon because they saw lights on the horizon because they were signaling it and with more lamps as well, right? I would I would all I would order that boat to sail to that ship and to bring help. I would right, alter. Then, I would alter absolutely nothing. History it, well, is immutable. I, History is immutable. It is not I think worth. A lot of, it is not worth whatever damage you would do to the time stream to save a handful of lives. It is not worth it. Yeah. It is not have worth. You, it. Have you have you heard some of the ridiculous? Do you remember that episode? Of, that episode of Do- the Ninth Doctor. They stop Rose's father from being killed. And remember what happens from that action. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. History is immutable. History is immutable. Anyway, let's carry on. Is there really nothing that could make you leave the hole for a minute? I'm afraid not. Damn. Oh, thank God. It's the, the option is gone, finally. Can you tell me something? Sure. What role does Prince Z Hang have in this? I have evidence that the Templars were somehow it's connected hung, to the, the way, Chinese right. nobility. That's true. Jacques de Molay asked Prince Dorima Cha II for a hundred thousand soldiers. A lot of soldiers. And if he had got them, they might have changed the course of the battle. Though it would still have been very close and probably bloody. He didn't get them? What battle is not bloody? No. The prince doubted Molay's loyalty. And after the negotiations, he dropped the Grand Master. Like a hot potato. De Molay swore revenge, but it all came out differently. I assume today's Templars want to take revenge on the Chinese nobility for the treason. For treason, they feel it was. Only nobody knows exactly where the core of the old nobility is now. Okay, I'll take a look around. Sim, por favor. Ooh, hello. A cheap-looking wristwatch. Didn't notice that before. I noticed it a while ago while he was talking. The watch doesn't look as cheap anymore. There's an engraving. Ilak al Kalb. That rings a bell somewhere. (laughs) Ilak al Kalb. (laughs) That is a nice little throwback. Our kebabs are made from meat of dog. (laughs) 
Well, no, he says to him that you, your your kebabs are made of dog meat. That's not... what I said. Our, our, the kebabs are made of dog meat. Uh, I, thought, I, I thought it was like a Hello. question you meant. Yes. Like, are they made of dog meat? Not they are. Meat. Uh, our kebabs are made of meat of dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I found your wristwatch. Thanks. How about a tiny finder's reward? You expect me to give you a reward? Now listen. I find yes. your watch, sacrificing valuable moments of my short life in the process, and you won't give me a reward? Okay, okay. Here, you have a keyring. Please excuse my rudeness. We got a keyring now. Does it have a light on it? That's an anchor. <laughs> wow, what am I supposed to say? A description of what we just picked up, George. Fucking anything. <laughs> There's a bag. Oh, that was brilliant. That's the old man's bag. I wonder what might be inside. Well, te in a realistic world, none of your fucking business, George, but in Although a video... Although I'm filled <laughs> with guilt, I snatch an item from the bag. It's a thread. Oh, all right. Crafty. I'd rather not. So why the fuck do you walk all the way around there to say no? George, some sometimes, most times, I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you, George. Uh, well, at least the, at least your hatred of George has not gotten better since we played these games. Could you do me a favor? Do you see that professor over there? He won't let me work at the well. Could you distract him for a minute? What do I get for it? Let me think. You know I never managed to steal anything from the souvenir seller. He always seems distracted when he is reading his newspaper. But he cuts holes in it and looks through them and notices everyone who comes near. I swear to you, sir, once I tried to take a box of Berg chocolate sweetmeats, but he got me and spanked my arse. Since then, he has chased me away whenever I have come near the shop. And I think he has Why a do you sound like a Stealing Irish isn't the right way to make arse. a living. Well, but I didn't have arse. money, and I have never eaten chocolate in my life. I can understand that. If I say arse, chocolate they say... Without chocolate. Ah. That's unimaginable. Oh, I can't, Will you I help can't me if I get you the chocolate? Sure. I'd be happy to, sir. Well, he's supposed to remind him of uh, the Irish kid from the first game, so... But he's not Irish, though. I know. I I don't know. I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm at, I feel like I'm making good points. You are making good points, and I can't explain them. So... <laughs> Hi, it's me again. Yes? Aren't you feeling like reading anymore? I don't have anything left to read. I already know this paper by heart. But... What business is it of yours? Just curious. I'll be off then. And goodbye. How about reading a magazine? But that is French. Damn, that totally escaped me. Well then, I'm lucky that my mama is from Bordeaux, huh? Pardon? Just give me that and go away. You are rude, sir. The yeah, and you've called George rude as well, magazine. so... But I fear either. he might see my shadow when I lean over the stall to steal the chocolates. No, he'd be bound to see my shadow. There you go. You got it. And, and he doesn't see it. He doesn't notice this. <laughs> Great. I have the chocolate. 
Looks like a broken broom. I didn't know right clicking it would disassemble it. I didn't know that either, I'll be honest. Here's your chocolate. Give it to me. Who did you want me to distract? The man at the well. Okay. I will steal his bag. I'm good at that. I can hear you. Great. The boy has stolen the man's bag and the man has run after him. Now the well's unguarded. I guess it's easier than animating okay. it. Now save the game. Hmm. It goes down about four meters. But as the inside of the well is rough, I can get my hands into the gaps and get in or out without too much trouble. There's Baphomet. There's a heap of, deb of debris. Hmm. Looks like something's hidden underneath it. It's one half of a key. The Templars must have hidden the other part. But where? You notice that brick above the Bahamut's yep. uh, idol? That's out of place. Very out of place, actually. <laughs> this brick looks different from the others. It bulges at well, the wall. Servant. Intentionally? Alright, please tell me the other half of the key isn't in here. I better not touch anything. Forget that. It's too hard for my bare hands. The brick looks unsound, though. Well, the screwdriver has become our um, manhole looking point. Indeed. With the screwdriver, yeah. the second half of the key is revealed. George Stobart, <sighs> tracing the Templars again. It is. Do you know how freaking stupid it is to hide the key in the same one place as the other half of the key? Maybe it fell down from somewhere. Maybe it, cause it is debris that it was in. True. You know? I can't believe it. See? The professor was right. The Templars were here. Okay, so I'm assuming you oh, can you keys. see that cross? Can you see that? Can you see that cross on the wall there? It doesn't work. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> wow. What am I supposed to say? Oh, for fuck's sake, George. Anything! <laughs> right, before you do anything, you can't use the key on the idol. I remember this bit. Wow, what am I supposed to say? You're an idiot, George. Um, dis dis disable the um thing you've got. You know, the little uh, <laughs> hook thing you've got. Okay. And then use the... um. No, not that. Um, The other uh, thread on hmm. the key. Yes, that's it. There you go. Now you can use the um, the, the keyhole right next to the idol. I can hardly believe my eyes. It's the seal. I can hardly believe... We've outrun the Templars. We've made it. I must tell the professor. No, you will never get this seal. Give it to me, Professor Aruda. Now! Even though you betrayed the order by your sudden disappearance, we will reward you. Never! George, run! Monsieur Stobar, good to see you back again. The feeling isn't mutual, to be honest. You have something that belongs to us. Oh, really? Flap. Shoot the professor, and then get Stobart. Use the, use the um, cross on the little seal hole next to the set. The deepening? Yep. Odd word, but oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm in A long this flight of stairs. I guess it leads outside to safety. Never go down a, a staircase. You don't know where it may end up.
Back in Diego's apartment. <clears throat> it's like we live here at this point. Oh, what's that on the table? The letter. The Dear George letter. That's a letter from Nico. She was here. No time no. for explanation. She was in Take her own apartment? George, you don't say. Ask for Bray. He'll take you to Xi Hang. Trust me, Nicole. Xi Hang. It's Xi, pronounced Xi. Oh, have you noticed that she's um, signed it, Nicole? Yes. Doesn't that seem a bit suspicious? Yes. But George is stupid, so let's go. <laughs> Indeed. That's not going to work. That's not a good idea. It's a great idea, George. Uh... <laughs> That's not... Excuse me. Really? Um, yes. I must be going. Yeah. Oh, no. I am George Stobart. I am completely real human. Okay, we can go... Nowhere but the airport. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jacques Beaumelieu, and I'm your captain for this flight. The weather is a bit rainy, but this will cause no delay on our flight. We are scheduled to land at Beijing Airport in approximately eight hours' time. On behalf of myself and the crew, I would like to wish you a pleasant and relaxing flight. Would you like a drink, sir? Okay. I'll wait until the lady is gone and start my exploration of the plane later. Would you like a drink, sir? Ouch! What have you done? You poured coffee all over me. Idiotic staff. And I'm even paying for this. Oh, I'm sorry. How stupid of me. Please let me clean this up. Looks like the angry video game nerd. <laughs> yeah, it does, actually. What a shitload of fuck. A man in his 60s, I guess. He looks kind of helpless. How did we get all this onto a plane? I have no idea. Good evening, my name is Stobart. George Stobart. Ah, oh, my name is Bourne. Sigmund Bourne. Are you the captain? Um, not really. I don't think, Just a passenger I don't think planes like you, have captains. I if I were the captain, you could probably tell from my uniform. They, they do. They often like in the ones that fly the plane mostly, and then they have a first officer. Sometimes a flight engineer. I'm lucky I got on the right plane. Just seems weird to have a captain with no actual crew. Oh, the woman pushing the um, car up there is a crew member, and the one at the back is a crew member. A flight attendant. Yeah, they they're part of the crew. Part of the ship, part of the crew. Exactly. A well-conditioned young man. He reminds me of myself when I was a motorcycle courier. You're a what now? You're a Marcus, motorcycle courier, George? You can ride a motorcycle? Since when? Are yeah, you not getting him? You can ride a motorcycle. You're not the one who rides a motorcycle. Gabriel Knight rides a motorcycle, George, not you. Good evening. My name is George Stobart. Oh, hello. I'm Amanda. How are you, George? Fine, thanks. Would you mind if I talk to you for a while? Sure, I don't like flights where you only sit around and wait. Now, from what we know of George, I can figure out one thing about him. When he says motorcycle, he probably means Vespa. He's probably the kind of person who refer to a motorized scooter as a motorcycle. Tell me something about yourself, Armando. Okay, I'm from Argentina. I work there on a construction site and in my free time I'm a bodybuilder. That's my passion. Sounds interesting. What are you doing here in France? I'm on my way to a huge contest. Boy, if I win that, I can retire. Good luck then. 
It's funny, because we're not technically in France. We're in the sky right now. You know, I used to be just as muscular as you are. No, you weren't. It's a must, but a little bragging won't hurt anyone. Really? Well, not much left of it. <laughs> Sorry, George. Just kidding. Um, alright, let's leave it at that. But George, See you later. why would you lie ciao. about that? That doesn't... that's not how you spell ciao. <sighs> but that doesn't make you look good. That, like... Barring an accident, it just means you're lazy. But I think this is a good place to call it for now. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I'm gonna steal some coke next time. <laughs> and and George is and to have George sent to the room. That's in uh Ooh, we could have George ejected from the plane. Oh yes. Without a parachute. He didn't have a person to open a, open the at uh, the um, door of the plane mm -hmm. while it's still going of course. and jump out. He'd also be the person to sit in his room, shining laser pointers at planes, <laughs> and just being a being I mean, a I mean, nuisance. he would jump out of a moving plane if it was landing on a tarmac because he would touch a, a stove that's burning hot. Yes. Yeah. If we tell him to do it, he has to do it. That's the rule. Yeah, but, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't actually had a game yet where you tell him to hurt himself. He's like, um, "No, I'm not doing that. I'll get hurt." He hears voices and he does what they, he does what they say. I hear voices in my head. <laughs> so he has a Randy Orton reference. Uh, anyway, see you guys next time. I've been Merrick Tomato, and I've been Classic Gamer. And ciao. It would just spell C I A O, by the way, people who made this game. Not, however, the f uh, C H A U. <laughs> also, I'm convinced, like, these two are um, developers. Quite possibly. Because they're in a, a more realistic than some of the other. Like, more than this gen. Like, more realistic than this guy who has no eyes. Yeah. Anyway, ciao. Ciao. Hi. Thanks for watching. This has been played, edited, and recorded by me, Merrick D'Amato. And he's been helped by me, Classic Gamer. You can find a link to Classic's YouTube channel, Classics Gamer, and his Twitch in the description below. Please like, comment, and subscribe.